So um, uh, this is, uh, I view this as sort of a continuation of, of my first discussion. This is the, the most severe subset uh, of the patients that we take care of. Um, and, uh, and so let's uh, just frame out what the problem is. Uh, when, when you have, uh, and let me preface this by saying, uh, in this talk about vertebral plana, I'm only talking about insufficiency, osteoporotic vertebral plana, not those due to tumors uh, or other uh, um, issues. But, uh, but in these patients, and we're seeing a, a growing number of them, um, you know, they've, they've lost most or all of their ability to load share in the anterior column. Uh, some of them uh, have lost uh, some of their, their posterior tension band. Um, they have certainly have the, the potential for neural compression, um, and, and all of them essentially have severe osteoporosis. Where I come from, uh, you cannot assume that uh, these patients are being medically uh, managed well. And um, in fact, uh, a few years ago when I had a partner uh, join me from Canada, she uh, was kind of blown away at at how haphazard the, the primary care uh, network is for, for the patients that we take care of in, in Missouri. Uh, and so we, at, at, our, at the Orthopedic Institute in, in Missouri, we have our own bone health clinic that, that we staff uh, so that we can help uh, uh, these patients get optimized. And then you'll hear and read about uh, Kummel's disease uh, this is, uh, uh, represents uh, a avascular necrosis after a vertebral compression fracture. It was described a long time ago. In fact, uh, uh, the original description I was surprised to find uh, was before the invention of radiographs. Um, and, um, uh, and, and, and now we, we know it as uh, sort of path mnemonic when you see this compression fracture uh, with a, a vacuum cleft or a gas cleft. Um, and what it represents is a failure of the normal fracture healing process, right? Uh, in, in the normal fracture healing process, there would be um, uh, cutting cones being, being uh, cut into the, the uh, bone, neovasculature, neogranulation uh, uh, response. And for some reason, probably that, that vascular response is impeded and, uh, and, and, and so the, the bone tissue there is, is of limited viability. And it affects uh, uh, quite a few of these elderly vertebral compression fractures. Um, uh, and, and if they have pre-existing stenosis, uh, it, which many of them do, it can exacerbate that and, and, and tip them over to now neurologically they're not functioning well. Um, Dr. Schnaka, uh, you know, graced us with, with two powerful talks about this. Uh, his uh, uh, German uh, Trauma Society uh, laid out uh, the, the way to classify these and think about these, and I think this is uh, clearly where, where we are right now in terms of, uh, of uh, how we understand these fractures and, and, and uh, are, are not just lumping them all together as vertebral compression fractures. Um, well, what about just uh, conservative care or, or uh, expectant care versus cement augmentation. Uh, we have a, a paper out of Miami from uh, this, this year uh, with 100 patients and six year follow up, pretty impressive, I thought. Um, uh, 59 with cement augmentation, 41 without. And, um, uh, and you can see uh, one of the representative uh, cement augmentation kyphoplasty uh, cases. Um, and. Um, and so uh, while they, they all had a lot of pain uh, preoperatively, um, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, the change, the improvement in their, uh, in their pain postoperatively was substantially better for those who got augmentation versus those who did not. And, and um, as a, a, a small aside, I, I was uh, one of the, the AAOS's representatives to the Japanese Orthopedic uh, Association a few years ago. Uh, for their meeting on, on osteoporotic uh, fractures, and, um, and, and, and the AAOS uh, needs to step up and revise their, their guidelines on uh, augmentation that they put out uh, about 10 years ago, because um, they, we, we have a growing uh, body of evidence that says it, it, it is uh, substantially uh, effective in improving patients' function and quality of life. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned last night during our case uh, discussions when um, 
uh, about 20, 25 years ago when uh, uh, vertebroplasty was first being described in, in Europe and, and, and first being uh, started to be adopted in North America, uh, Vertebra plana was was considered one of the contraindications. You you couldn't uh, or shouldn't try to do uh, vertebroplasty in these patients with uh, vertebra plana, um, and and that is really being rethought. Um, and, and so there's a a paper uh, out of Italy in the European Journal of Radiology uh, with 40 patients where they showed um, uh, this is uh, some some of their their own um, uh, fluoro spots how they could uh, get cement augmentation. In, into these patients, uh, and in fact, <clears throat> when they had them prone on the table, if they if they saw a gas cleft, they tried to fill that with cement, and um, and and they they clearly showed that it was um, uh, was effective in terms of treating the patient's pain and uh, their Roland Morris uh, disability scores uh, were clearly improved. So I, I I wouldn't say that you can treat all vertebral planas with uh, cement augmentation. But it, in my mind, it is not an, an automatic contraindication. And, uh, and in this series, a substantial number of these got cement leakage into the uh, disk space, which uh, was, was uh, really uh, a non-issue. Um, uh, Becker in uh, uh, 2008 also had a small series uh, that showed that kyphoplasty was, was clearly doable in some of these patients. Um, uh, with uh, osteonecrosis, and uh, uh, and 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 if possible, uh, could improve their uh, their their pain scores. Although, as you noticed uh, in the the previous series, they got their pain pain scores down to two. In this case, uh, only only down to four. So still, uh, not insubstantial post procedural pain. People have. Um, uh, come up with all kinds of um, implants uh, to try to um, address the the deformity or or uh, 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 help uh, the the vertebral body uh, in vertebral plana regain its uh, pre morbid shape. None of those are particularly impressive because the, this is a this is a biological failure of the bone and and, and any of these uh, devices that try to reestablish the normal shape of the bone rely on its own strength. And and it's it's uh, that's failed. So, so I, I wouldn't say that uh, that uh, things like uh, I think on the right here was like the spine jack. Um, uh, I I wouldn't necessarily rely on, on those devices. Uh, but but the evidence base for cement augmentation in the face of vertebral plana is growing, and so it it probably should be considered part of your armamentarium. And then obviously in those severe cases, as you see here on the left. Um, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a corpectomy or vertebrectomy, if, if necessary, and and uh, spanning with it with any of our uh, corpectomy spacers is clearly uh, a, an option for for the severe cases. Uh, in this paper from from uh, this year in the European Spine Journal, um, uh, this is a series of uh, over 100 patients, um, and. Um, uh, and, and you know, uh, half of them got uh, 360 degree fusions, uh, and um, a quarter of them got uh, uh, posterior spinal fusions and um, <clears throat> uh, alone. And and uh, with four year follow up, which is really again pretty good. Um, uh, EQ5D, so th so their general health measures were essentially the same. Uh, uh, and 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 their conclusion was that. 360-degree fusion is a legitimate option. Okay, um, uh, but if they're uh, if they're if they come out the same, then I think an equally valid conclusion might be, uh, why not do the smaller surgery? Uh, uh, so, um, and maybe that just uh, represents our continued biases across the Atlantic Ocean. I I, I don't know. Um, there's a, a paper from a couple of years ago in just uh, a small uh, series of uh, 10 patients with transpedicular reconstructions. Um, uh, while it, it is uh, uh, doable, uh, it is uh, 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 not particularly uh, powerful uh, when you're coming from the back to try to uh, reconstitute the, the, the full height of the anterior column. It's going to be harder to do that from the back. Uh, but you maybe don't, you don't have to completely reconstitute it back to uh, anatomic, uh, and and so uh, you know they showed uh, uh, this this process 
with uh, you know, 10 patients who uh, uh, apparently did well. Uh, again, uh, this year, so, so I tried to keep uh, my evidence review uh, pretty current. Uh, this year out of India in the NAS Journal, uh, 48 patients uh, who had uh, vertebroplasty, uh, again, clearly a benefit for their, um, their pain, uh, and uh, in this case, uh, improved their local kyphosis. Um, although, I, I, again, I don't think you can count on vertebroplasty uh, most of the other studies have not shown that it, that it, it uh, makes a big difference in terms of the local kyphosis. But, uh, but if you get the patient comfortable enough that you can get them prone on a table, you might be able to get some, um, some reduction just from that and then hold that with your vertebroplasty. And then, you know, um, this probably goes without saying, but if, if you're planning to operate uh, this patient, you have gotta consider uh, the rest of the patient, their, all their, their medical comorbidities. Again, where I come from, uh, they all come with a boatload of medical comorbidities. Um, uh, we are, are part of the belt that uh, has uh, a wave of obese, malnourished patients. Uh, and, and if you're planning uh, a, a big surgical intervention uh, from the side, from the back, or both, that's gonna be a physiologic load that they have to be able to heal. And, uh, and, and so, um, you know, automatic uh, measuring the x-rays, looking at your SVA, and, and deciding that you're gonna uh, take on a big surgery, um, I would say you're probably not ready yet. Uh, you, you need to uh, address uh, those other issues. Uh, again, um, uh, where I live, um, if I put a big posterior incision on them, uh, will they have anyone to help with their wound care when they get out of the hospital? Um, that's not an automatic. Um, I would strongly consider cementing screws. My lab a decade ago did a lot of uh, the, the, uh, the uh, bench work on uh, cement augmentation, and and it it is a clear game changer in these osteoporotic patients. Uh, yes, it comes with risks of cement extravasating, um, and and I agree with Klaus. Uh, we have options in the U.S. to use uh, low or high viscosity cements. Uh, try to stick with high viscosity cements. Uh, it, it is uh, clearly a lower risk for leakage. Uh, I would not use a cement that has not been used through your fenestrated screw. So uh, there are some cements and some screw fenestrations that the cement is too viscous to get through the screw fenestrations. So you cannot just assume on the first time you decide to do this that I'm gonna match this cement off the shelf with this screw that I have. Um, uh, and in my lab, we broke some cement uh, injectors uh, 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 that were supplied by the same manufacturer who had not tested it in their own screws. Uh, and, and, and that did not come to market because I called them up and said, hey, uh, what's going on here? Um, and then uh, last uh, issue I think is uh, right now we have no good data. If you're gonna uh, treat these vertebra planas um, on uh, cementing the uh, 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 UIV plus one. So, you know, in terms, terms of uh, uh, proximal junctional kyphosis, if you're doing posterior fixation, uh, that's an open question in these patients right now. Thanks, appreciate it. Great, all right. Those were the four best talks I've ever heard on osteoporosis. No kidding, that was amazing. Can I, can I ask one question, Dr. Sasso? So Ben, can you put the camera on me there? Uh, so there's a new manufacturer out of, for CME reasons, can't mention the name. And Ted, this is a question to you. Would this make sense to have these kind of malleable allograph chains uh, that uh, you can kind of uh, salubricate more or less in saline that you can then push into the vertebral body and kind of coil in there to impact that up? We showed that last night in one of the cases. Does that kind of a concept offer a new option here that's more appealing than the cement, which as Klaus had shown, you also addressed, can leak anywhere? Does that kind of make intuitive sense to you to kind of pack vertebral bodies with Yeah, so chains. it strikes me there's, a, there's a, a potential upside and downside. So the upside is if you create a cavity with traditional kyphoplasty technique um, and then pack it really well with those uh, allograft beads uh, so that it is load sharing, uh, that's an upside. And it is potentially uh, um, uh, uh, bioactive, right? Uh, it can be remodeled over time. That's a big upside to me. Um, the downside though is that cement, um, not only goes into the cavity, but will extend into the fracture fissures and help stabilize that, which is a large part of the pain relief of the, the procedure. And so um, uh, I, I, await, I know Joe Lane is, is uh, apparently uh, 
uh, doing a series of, of patients with this uh, technique and, and I, I sort of await the clinical data on that. But, but I think there's uh, real potential upsides here um, uh, and, and we'll have to see uh, how it matches up with uh, traditional cements. Great, and one more quick question and that is these construct decisions. Does it make more sense to do longer constructs? Like I showed a case of mine last night where for a single burst fracture I went to the lower thoracic spine to the pelvis. Or is it more sensible to just do ultra short fixation then kind of cement the vertebra above and below? So let's say we have an L3 burst fracture, go to L2 and L4 and then cement above mm -hmm. and below. What's better, big, go big uh, or just go short? Yeah, so uh, I'll disappoint you with no, no, there is no simple answer. So. Uh, and the reason for that is if you read older papers or older textbook chapters, they routinely said uh, you need long fixation for osteoporotic uh, constructs. That is not uh, true on its uh, face because it depends on the patient's global balance and it depends on uh, whether you have enough anterior load sharing in the construct between the fracture and whatever you've done uh, anteriorly. So it's, a, it's an interplay between the patient's global uh, uh, sagittal balance, the anterior uh, load sharing ability. Um, uh, it is not as simple as all patients with osteoporosis. You just need to keep adding levels. Thank you. Can I ask one, one question? Uh, you alluded to this a, a second ago. Um, the pain relief from vertebroplasty, is it all mechanical or is it neurologic? Is it burning, the exothermic reaction of burning the basal vertebral nerve that we know is, 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 is a big deal? Or is it a combination of both or what? causes the immediate relief of pain? So um, I'm gonna bring my uh, orthopedic surgeon bias to this, Rick. Um, I think that it's likely uh, vastly mechanical. So, so uh, and any of us who have trained in orthopedic surgery know that uh, the quickest way to bring pain relief to a fracture patient is to uh, splint their fracture. Uh, a a, a well-placed splint that immobilizes uh, the fracture fragments brings them immediate substantial pain relief I think that that's what we're looking at with cement augmentation techniques. Once you stabilize the, uh, the pathologic motion between the fracture fragments, uh, I think that's the majority of the patient's pain relief. Very good. Are we ready to go to the lab? I think we're ready for the lab. Ted, that was outstanding. I agree with Dr. Sass. We were privileged to four uh, unparalleled uh, lectures in terms of osteoporosis care. It's a growing problem. So thank you so much. Thank you. Sure.